No sound. My bad. Okay, I'm, I'm, I got it now. <laughs> it's been a lot this morning. But we got it now. Um, what up? Uh, Kiara, Markeisha, Tamika, Terry Lynn, Jason, Calvin. What's up, y'all? Thanks for the heads up. Facebook family, where you at? Feels good to be home. Tag somebody. Share it with them. I know they didn't get, they didn't get comfortable now in one week. They don't want to wake up. But you got to tag them. Say, listen, God, God is still good all the time. No matter how sleepy you are, he's still good. He's still good. So wake on up. Come on. Walk with me, oh, walk with me. Come on. Tag somebody. If you're on YouTube, like the video. Uh, you know, share it with your family, your loved ones, something. Come on in. If you're on Facebook, like the video. I love the video. Uh, tag somebody in it. Share it on your page. Uh, that's how people get blessed. They get blessed when you share. All right. Uh, we got like we got like one more minute. It was a minute getting delayed. Started on today. Um, I missed y'all last week. All right. Missed y'all last week. Glad to be home. Feels good to be home. Feels good to be home. That's what Kanye West saying. All right. Let's do it. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. Thank you for love, grace, peace, joy. Um, Thank you for as good as you've been to us. We uh, we appreciate your goodness. And uh, we just simply ask God that you will continue to get the glory in all that we think, say, and do. For without you, God, there is no us. We devote our mornings to you and our lives to you. And we thank you for it. In your shoes, name we pray. And all of God's people say it. Amen. Booyah. How y'all feeling? All right. We are technically like a week behind uh in our devotions and uh i want to make sure i get you caught up uh real quick touch on a couple of things all right but i want to keep it simple today i want to i want to talk about uh, exodus 4 and 10 um i want to talk about you know you know the things that god calls us to do um no every single last one of us has a a unique and specific calling. Every last one of us, you know, God has wired us to to do something great, monumental in the earth, and that uh, ways that He would use us to show His glory, to show His love, to show His kindness. Every single last one of us are wired that way, whether we know it or not. Every last one of us have something unique and 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 godly anointed. On the inside of us. And there's a reason that you are alive. Regardless of what the enemy may want to tell you. Regardless of what he want, may want to make you feel. There's a reason you're alive. And uh, that's what we call a calling. All right. Your calling is. This is one of the, the reasons I breathe. This is one of the things God put me in the earth to do. I'm in the earth to do this. And uh, my goal is for, is for you know, many of you to start exploring that more. Um, not just the passive happiness, you know, you know, live and let live perspective that there really doesn't challenge you to dig deeper and to see, you know, what is your why? Why are you here? Why are you positioned in such a way? Um, why, did, why does God gift you this way? Why does he call you this way? What is it like? I need you to dig deeper because if you don't dig deeper, then oftentimes you will miss, you know, one of the greatest reasons you were alive. I'm talking a little bit about Moses today, but it's important for us to look at his life and realize the stages he went through. You know, Moses went through um, a stage of living or being trained to be somebody that he was not called to be. He was gifted and skilled and trained to be a Pharaoh. He lived as if Pharaoh was his father. So he was, he was trained in the, the customs and the systems of this world and he was one of the best at being able to do it. He was an intellect. He was very, very intelligent and smart. So he was gifted and, and he was a leader in it. Uh, then he went through a stage of where he, he was rocked with his identity, where he saw himself differently. All right. So you're going to go through this phase, this phase where you feel like all your life was given to something else. You were, you were, you were prepping to be one thing, but then it doesn't work. 
maybe since you were young, you thought you were going to be a lawyer or a physician or uh, a psychologist or uh, work in a specific field and you, and you put a lot of your mental energy into it. And then you get on and you realize, like, that's not who I am. And he went through this identity shift when he realized that he was not an Egyptian, but that he was, in fact, a Hebrew, an Israelite. It made him, it made him change the way that he was thinking, right? He started to, to move differently, that the same things that he experienced before, he saw them differently. Because once you really know who you are, it's hard to see uh, calamity the same and hardship the same and difficulty the same. Once you really know who you are, it makes you change and operate in a different way. So he, he, he begins to change his, the way that he moves. He begins to fight. He goes on a run, right? He murders somebody for, for beating a Hebrew. He goes on a run. And for, for you know, 40 years of his life, Moses lives you know, taking care of his father-in-law's sheep. So he's working in somebody else's field. He's, in essence, making somebody else rich, right? He is working for Jethro. He's locked in. He's, he's engaged there. And, and, and Moses had prepped himself to die there. Moses had prepped himself to just stay in the field, be a shepherd, right? And, that, and that's just it. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be a shepherd until, until I, I'm, I'm done. And some of you guys may be there. You may be in that place where you have just settled. I'm, this is going to be my job. I'm, I'm going to get a good job and I'm going to love God. That's it. I'm, I, you know, uh, if it's to be a good nurse, if it's to be an attorney, if it's to be a business owner, uh, whatever it may be, I, I got a good job and uh, I'm cool. I'm going to work my 40 years and retire. That's what, that was Moses' plan. Moses' plan was, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my time and get on in line and go to heaven. You understand what I'm saying? He was, he was engaged there. But God met him. God met him while he was doing his job. And God began to speak to Moses. And he, he challenges Moses. He, he piques Moses' interest. And I want to challenge, I want to tell you kind of, I got to walk you through the story so you can understand how God's speaking to you. God didn't just come out of nowhere like Moses. You know, that's how we think. We think that that's what God does. We think that God is just like, uh, he, he's James Earl Jones. He's Mufasa. He is the character in the movie or a caricature in the movie. And that he just comes in and he's like, I have a mission for you. Right. <laughs> and so most of us are missing God because we think he's supposed to come in a cartoon's voice. But that's not what it, that's not how it happened. Moses' interest was piqued. He piqued his interest. That's what God did. Moses looked to the left and said, now... He saw a burning bush. The problem was the bush was burning, but it wasn't really on fire. It piqued his interest. It's like it's, it's on fire. Forgive me. It's on fire, but it's not burning up. So he sees the fire. He feels the heat radiating from the fire, but it's not burning up. So he, he's looking at something on fire and it's not burning up. And he's trying to it just piqued his interest. He's trying to figure it out. And, and that's how God begins to speak to most of you. It, he just piques your interest. You know, it makes you look like, man, what does this God think? You know, what would what, what happen if I really receive prayer? I, what, what's this church? We'll go check out this evolved church. I don't really know, I don't know about faith, but I'll check it out. And then you come and something begins to speak to you. Or maybe you decide to start a devotional. You start reading your word. And it just piqued your interest. It wasn't like it came as this powerful calling you weren't you, you know it's not always that you were in the shower and God is like daughter I'm calling you to ministry or son I want something great for you right that's not the way that it works I, you know if we can if we can come out of the semantics and uh sensualizing it all of the time that we can really get a chance to see God it doesn't come in in this way where God always just absolutely disrupts everything sometimes when God first starts calling you he, he's just piquing your interest he just you start caring about certain things. All of a sudden, you start caring about the women you're called to, the men you're called to. You start caring about the children. You start caring about the city. You start caring about the people. You start caring about the women. You just, something piques your interest. You, you're just looking at it first. Though. You're not really feeling like you're called to. You're just like, you know, that's interesting. Now, I, I would like to do something with that. I would like to, you know, 
I would like to work with that a little bit. It was, it was very simple. It's just, it always starts as, as, as the peak interest. And, and so he goes over to look at this bush because he's interested, not because, not because it was absolutely God at first. And I, and I need you to catch this. It wasn't that it was absolutely God. It was, it was actually just, he was interested in something. And, and some of you, your calling started with an interest. That's what it was. I just, uh, you know, my calling started with, I wonder what, what, what would God have for me? I didn't know I was called to this city. I didn't know that the God had called me uh, to move into prophetic, to have an apostolic work. I didn't know that. I know that God called me to pastor. I, I just, I had an interest. I had an interest. What, you know, what, what would it be? You know, I don't know. I got a pastor for some people and a pastor for the city, but I don't know. It was just an interest. And that's how Moses got started. Right. And I'm speaking to somebody right now who you, you, you don't really know your calling. Man, this message is so good. I hope you hope you receive this. You, you don't really know your calling yet. You just like I got a few interests. I got some things that really, really stick deep to, you know, in my heart. And I got some things that really speak to me. And that's that's it, Pastor. I don't I can't say that I feel called to it. But here's the thing that nobody in Scripture, when they first were called, felt called. Nobody, not Paul, not Peter, not Moses. We read the book as if the people had a book to read. I need you to understand the people of the Bible didn't have a Bible to read. They, they didn't have a reference scripture. They didn't have a reference point. There was nothing that they had to read that, that helped them know how to navigate, how to navigate through it and figure out they didn't have that. They, they didn't feel called. As a matter of fact, many of them they didn't know what a calling was. For many of them, a calling was not a calling. That's, that's the definition we gave to it now. For many of them, it was just like, I have a purpose for why I'm alive. God has given me a purpose. And once God has given you a purpose, and that purpose begins to beat inside your heart at the same rhythm of your heartbeat, now you know you have a calling. Because you begin to step into it effortlessly. You begin to just naturally do it because the purpose that God has given to you starts to beat at the same rhythm of your heartbeat. What does that mean? That means you stop trying to be it and it just starts to become the thing that moves you the most. It becomes your life's reason. That's what I'm calling your life's reason, your life's purpose. You can look at people like Dr. King and those guys and say, wow, I see their calling. But he didn't know he had a calling. He just had a life's purpose. He didn't like seeing what was happening to African-American people. And, and something in him made him say, this cannot be OK. I cannot let this happen. And I say nothing and do nothing about it. And as he began to step into it, he realized that he was wired for it. And it became his calling but it didn't start as a calling it started as an interest it started as an interest and then he felt connected to it and it became a purpose and once it became a purpose the outsiders identified it as a calling it is post identified as a calling most callings hear me when i tell you this it's unpopular truth. Most callings are post-identified. That means you don't recognize it's your calling until you've actually already made it your calling. You're already in it. You're already operating in it. Then you figure out, wow, this is my calling later down the road. But it's not because you knew it was your calling to start. And some of you are struggling on, God, where do I start? Because I don't know my calling. And I think I need to know my calling before I'm able to start. And that's what's holding you up. So I want to free you. I want to free you right now. You start with what did God use to peak your interest? What did God use to peak your interest? You start stepping into it. You're going to realize that once your interest is peaked, some of this stuff, once you step into it, makes you come alive. I was interested in preaching. I was interested in communicating. I was just interested. But once I stepped into it, I realized it made me come alive. I became a different man. I began to see things differently. Once I saw, man, God, you have wired me for something different. Once I saw it, I was like, this is my, this is my calling. This is my purpose. 
My purpose is to is, is, is to help this city. My purpose is to help this world begin to have a, a different kind of relationship with God. Not one that is only experienced in a church, but one where you begin to walk with God in your everyday life. That you begin to see that you are a spiritual being having a human experience, not a human being having a spiritual experience. You are a spirit and you will live as a spirit forever. Your, your time and your body is temporary. So your connection to God is mandatory. Are you listening to me? I found my purpose. I now see it as a calling. Outsiders identified it as this man is called to do this. But this is not because I woke up and said this was my calling. It started with an interest. Moses was interested. He was interested when he saw a bush on fire. It didn't make sense to him. The bush was on fire, but it wasn't being consumed. It wasn't burning up. Anybody that understands shrubs, you understand. There was a shrub that set on fire. It burns up quickly. Moses is thrown off. He was not there because he felt like, I'm called. He, his calling was trying to get money. He was working for money, but God piqued his interest. Then God spoke to him as he began to respond to it, as he stepped into it. Then it was called a calling why is it called a calling? Because something is calling to me. It, it, you, you, once you step into, into your calling, you will know it because it's almost like even when you want to walk away, something keeps calling you. It keeps pulling you. Purpose keeps pulling you. It keeps calling you. It keeps calling you. Now, we, we see all of this, and I want to talk about one piece of the calling that many of us don't, don't discuss. And the, the part of the calling that we don't discuss is the insecurity that shows up in every person's calling. Every person's calling. You will look at a point in time in their life where there's some insecurities. I mentioned Dr. King earlier. There was times in his life where you would listen to certain of his speeches and he would say, I don't know if we're going to get there. But this is my dream. And even when he first started stepping into it, he was not stepping into it to be a leader. He had his own insecurities of things that he was trying to work through. We see Moses here in Exodus 4 and 10. We see he has some insecurities. He has been piqued by God. God piques his interest. He, he grabs a hold of him. And once God, Moses comes closer to the, to the bush, God begins to speak. So his interest was piqued, but then he became closer. All right. So you have an interest first. God will pique your interest, but it's your responsibility to get closer. You got to go closer. You got to dig in. That's what he did. He dug in. He dug in. He got closer and he dug in. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. Get closer to God. Get closer. Get closer. Your, your, your calling, your purpose becomes clearer as you get closer. Your purpose becomes clearer as you get closer. Come on. Your purpose becomes clear as you get closer. Get closer to God. So he walks closer to the bush and God begins to speak to him. And here's where it gets powerful. God begins to speak to him and God begins to call him. And, and here's the thing. Once God gives him a glimpse of his purpose, it is so big of a purpose that it startles Moses. I need you to understand this. It is so big, hallelujah, it is so big of a purpose that Moses is startled. He gets completely thrown off and he, and he locks up inside of his shell. God comes to him and says, Moses, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. And I want you to tell Pharaoh. Let my people go. Now, let me let me explain to you what God is asking this man to do. All right. Moses ran from this nation. Pharaoh is the leader of the free world. Do you understand me? He is the the the, the president, the king of the strongest nation on the earth at that time. This is the strongest nation on the earth at that time with the strongest military resources on the earth at that time. That, that just talking to, to, to Pharaoh the wrong way could cost you your life. Did you understand this? See, it's easy for us to talk about our purpose and, 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 and you know, well, God called me to do it. That's, that's good. That's cute. 
But you're nervous about stepping into that. What God told Moses to do was literally putting his life on the line. Because Moses going there talking, and in one moment, Pharaoh could be like, kill this man. Run with him. Go walk inside my palace. Had the nerve to come up to my throne and tell me, let my God say it. Man, like it literally could have costed him his life. So God tells him to go to the strongest nation with the strongest military power of, of, of his day. Still, some, some would even argue in all of history. Tells him to go to him and, and, and to his face and tell him, let my people go. This is what I want you to do, Moses. Now, let me tell you something. Um, Moses, identi God identifies something in Moses that Moses didn't identify himself. If you were to ask, why did God choose Moses? Because look at Moses' response. He said, Moses pleaded, but, but with the Lord, oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. I never have been. And I'm not now, even though you've spoken to me, I get tongue tied and my words get tangled. And I, I want you to catch this, man. Listen, it almost doesn't make sense when you look at God's selection. Until you look deeper. You know, I looked at it and it's like, man, this man is timid. He's nervous. He can't talk. But why would God choose him? I, you know, and when you, when you look at it, there's a couple of reasons, actually. Actually, one of the reasons Moses is disconnected enough. So Moses is outside of Egypt. He has learned that there is another world outside of Egypt. God has to call somebody who has left the country so that when he comes back and he speaks, he's able to speak from experience that, guys, there's a better way. That's number one. That's number one. So, so God couldn't call, to call him until he broke free. He couldn't speak to him until he broke free. I'm talking to somebody right now, all right? Until he broke free. Now, now in order for God to be able to speak to you, you got to break free from some stuff. Some of you may be exploring calling while still in bondage. Some of you may be exploring your calling while still in bondage. And um, thank you, Jesus. All right. You, you, you got to get out of bondage first because you can't hear God clearly while you're still struggling as a slave to some of your issues. See, God couldn't call somebody that was still a slave because slavery would have, would have messed with their mindset. He had to call somebody who had broken free. You understand what I'm saying? He had to call somebody who had gotten out of the grip of Pharaoh. And so that's where Moses was. And Moses was out of the grip. He had broken free from bondage. He had broken free from his issue. You had to break free from your issues before God can, can really speak clear to you. Because I can't call you to set somebody else free if you are still broken. I can't call you to go speak to poverty if you're still inside of it. I can't call you to go speak to brokenness if you're still broken. This is the struggle with so many people. There are so many of us trying to minister in an area that we have not been free in. Right? We have, we have all of the... the the, the services and, and the, the online services and, and the conferences and, and the groups and they've, and they've been led by people who are still stuck inside of their bondage and brokenness and trying to trying to help pull you out of something they don't know the way out for themselves. Do you understand me? Trying to help guide you out of something they don't know the way. Just like the underground road was like Harriet Tubman trying to free the slaves and they like where we going? And she's like, mm -mm. <laughs> but I'm trying to get free. No, you got you to walk ahead. Every leader has to walk ahead. You can't be with the crowd. You got to walk ahead, right? You, 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 you can't lead an orchestra unless you turn your back on the crowd. You can't lead an orchestra unless you turn your back on the crowd. If you're going to be a leader, you got to learn to turn your back on the crowd. You got to be able to go, go for broke. Go into what God has called for you to do. This is what, like, like learn that God deal with you so that you can leave from a place of y'all. I know what it's like. So Moses broke free. That's one of the reasons that God was able to use him. Number two is because God identified a, a, a kind of personality that he needed. Let me explain that to you. God God saw, and that's the only way that I can use it. I need you to, I need you to receive it. God saw the dog and the gangster in Moses. The proper words would be the protective spirit, the soldier in him. God saw it. 
What I mean by that is, uh, you no know, years before this time, when Moses fled out of Egypt, Moses fled because he saw an, an Hebrew, an Israelite, being beat. Being beat so bad, being beat to the ground. And, and when Moses saw that, something rose up in Moses and he murdered the man that was beating this innocent man. He went to stop. He went to stop it and he murdered him. There was so much passion inside of Moses for the man that was being beating, beaten that when he saw the, 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 the soldier that was beating him, Moses could not do anything. He couldn't control himself. He, he lost it and he went and he murdered that man for hurting an innocent person. That's why Moses was on a run because he hurt, he murdered somebody and his identity had been exposed. He had to be a Hebrew, but he, he murdered this man and fled. And God identified that there was something in Moses that made him hate what was happening to those people, to the Hebrews. There was something in Moses that made him hate what was happening to his people. I said there was something in him that made him hate what was happening to his people. And God identified that. God could have called anybody. He could have called Jethro. He could have called somebody that was still in Egypt. But he called Moses because inside of Moses, yeah, Moses, you may not be the best talker. You may not be the best preacher. You may not be the best speaker. But you have the most passion. You care about these people and whenever God calls you God calls you with, with, with the thing that you're most passionate about you know that's like saying you, you're going to be a, a, a pastor but you don't care about people or a minister but you don't care about people God can't call you to something you're not passionate about in some shape form or fashion when you look at your life there'll be things that you're passionate about I see uh see men that step into prison ministry or step into alcoholic anonymous ministry to AA ministry addiction ministry and they step into it because they used to be addicts or they used to be in prison and there's a passion they have because they care about those people and God begins to burden them with you have to do something about the people you care about right and it becomes their calling or women who who watch women go through divorce and brokenness or see single moms or, or whatever the condition or predicament may be they see that and then God begins to burden them because they care about that group of people or kids that have been traumatized, or those that have been sexually assaulted and abused, or those with mental health issues. They have a passion for it because they can identify with it. And God begins to equip your passion. Your, your calling is another way of uh, another way of saying calling is God equipping your passion and giving you the ability to go after it. Moses had a passion for the, for the people that were in slavery and bondage. And God is like, that is what I need. I need somebody that is willing to kill for what they believe. And I know that is, that is a, an unpopular truth and an unpopular conversation that many people don't want to have about scripture. But God has, has never been just looking for the wimpiest people. He hasn't. He called Mo Moses kill for what he believed in. So did Elijah. So did the Apostle Paul. They were so passionate about it that they were willing to put their life on the line. And I'm going to challenge some of you. This may not be for all of you, but what are you willing to put your life on the line for? What, what, what are you so passionate about? You're like, bro, I put my life on this. This ain't no game for me. I put my whole life into this because I'm so passionate about it. And then God equips the passion. He equips it. And you may not have all of the gift things. Moses didn't feel like he had all of it. He like, man, you know, I love, I love my brothers, but I love the Hebrews. I love the Israelites, man. But I ain't no, I ain't no talker. I ain't, you know, I ain't one of them people, man. I, you know, I don't know how to preach. I get tongue tied. You know what I mean? I be messing up with my words. I be stumbling. I don't sound as eloquent. I don't sound like I'm one of the most intelligent people. I, I struggle with the way that I communicate. And God is like, that's cool. I'll help you with that. I just need your heart. I need your passion. I need your passion because if I have that, I have everything that I need. All right. Let me pray for you, God. We just pray that we, we all step into our passion and that you would equip it, that we would identify not just a calling, which is an afterthought, but that we would identify what piques our interest and what, and what pulls on our desire. Because that's usually where we're called to. That's, where we're, that's what you gift us to be able to walk into. God, we thank you as this word digs in through us that we will walk and respond to our calling, to our purpose, to our assignment. We love you and we honor you. We thank you for the Yeshua's name. 
Amen. Listen, love y'all. Pray this word added life and value to you. Share it with somebody on your page. Tag somebody, whatever. I'm sure that somebody else needs to hear it, all right? Love y'all so much. Y'all have a great one. And we're going to be doing a prayer soon. I'll be releasing details. Doing a prayer downtown. Praying over our city. It should be coming soon. We're going to do some details today. But we got to cover our city with everything that's going on. We have to, all right? I'll let you know.